My first glimpse at the characteristics of a hospital birth happened um, during my last doctor's appointment before going into labor. I remember my doctor telling me that she was scheduling an induction for me about a week after my due date, just in case I didn't go into labor naturally before then. And I remember feeling that it wasn't enough time to go into labor naturally, but I didn't know what to say, and so I just let her schedule things for me. Um, I was only 21 at the time. I just didn't know how to assert any sort of authority over my own body. Fortunately, I went into labor um, within a week after that and just a few days after my due date, so I didn't have to worry about being induced, but I continued to have those issues with having control over my own body throughout my entire birth process at the hospital. Going into labor for me was actually, it was a little bit weird because my water had actually broken the day before and I hadn't gone into labor. Um, so I knew that it was coming really soon. Um, and I was stressed because I knew that, uh, that the medical guidelines indicated that uh, you have you give birth to your child within like 14 hours of your water breaking in case um, and there could be a, a chance of infection setting in and um, so this had been about you know but I contacted my midwife when my water broke um, and she knew my concerns and so she sent me links to scientific journals that talked about what the risk was. So I was able to go through those articles and those journals myself and see that the chances of a, of a serious infection setting in after um, your water breaks is like less than 1% um, within the first four days. So we established that um, we would go for, four, I would wait for four days. If, my, if I did not go into labor within four days, I would go to the hospital and be induced. When my contractions were finally getting stronger and closer together, I remember calling the on-call doctor and asking what I was supposed to do next because I hadn't asked any questions in my last few doctor's appointments, so I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do or when I was supposed to go into the hospital. And he basically said, well, because you're able to talk to me right now and you're not keeling over in pain, you can't be that far along in labor and you'll just have to sit and wait it out. Uh, and call the hospital later when it's time to go in. And then, of course, just a couple hours later, um, I was in the hospital in a lot of pain, and I remember just being really upset over his dismissive attitude over the whole process for me. And then at the hospital, uh, before I could even get into a room, I had to go into like a larger waiting room full of beds where a doctor checked to see how dilated I was and monitored my contractions to officially decide that yes I was in labor and they could admit me and get a room prepared for me. So I was probably in that room for at least 30 minutes before I was able to move into an actual hospital room and then be monitored again before they took me off of any machines and let me walk around and do what I wanted. So when I did have my first contraction, it was um, it was incredibly it was incredibly intense. It was extremely painful. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. Um, and what I didn't know at the time was that I would have my son within four hours. So it was just a really short labor. Um, and I was really nervous because I thought that it was going to, this was just the beginning and then it was just going to go be so horrible. I didn't know how I was going to make it. Um, so we called my midwife and she told me to keep in touch with her um, over the phone so that she would come. She lived about 40 minutes away. Um, so my husband kind of timed the contractions and I kind of just ignored him and I, I walked a a a around a lot. I kind of paced the hallway and I know it seems kind of funny, but I actually went and sat in the bathroom and um, the the we had tile floors and tile walls it was nice and cool and no I didn't want anybody in there um, so it was just nice and quiet and calm for me and that's where I did a lot of my laboring until my midwife arrived um, I went through my pregnancy with the plan that I was gonna have a drug-free birth I had read some books and articles about that to help motivate me because I didn't have anyone in my own life who was supportive of that plan. 
And for a while in the hospital, I was able to labor naturally. There was a jacuzzi tub in the bathroom that I was able to get into for about an hour or so, and it really helped with the pain and, and managing um, the pain of my contractions. But as soon as I got out of the tub, because they ha wanted to check and see if I had progressed any further, um, that whole Western, you know, institutionalized medical practice took over. I was about seven centimeters dilated and my water hadn't broken and they decided that it was time to break my water for me and speed up the process of labor. And once they did that, I wasn't allowed to get back into the tub and I did um, the rest of my labor in, in the room, mostly in the bed. And the pain got so bad once I was out of the tub that I ended up giving in and getting pain medication. And I basically I just started with a light IV drug that made me mostly just hallucinate and just took the edge off the pain a little bit. Um, and that wore off after about an hour. And I was fortunate enough to have a nurse who told me that I was doing really well, didn't need any more pain meds. And so I was able to go through the last few hours of labor um, without any medication. So while I was laboring in the bathroom by myself, um, my husband was uh, getting the birth tub together. And I really, I don't remember any of that. I just mostly wanted to be left alone um, and just kind of be nice and quiet and calm by myself. Um, so he had gotten the, the birth tub together and my midwife arrived. She quickly checked me to see how dilated I was because they were just amazed at how quickly it was progressing. And she saw the baby's head crowning. Um, and so I hurried into the birth tub and as soon as I got into the birth tub, the pain became so much more manageable. Um, it, 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 it was still painful, but it, it was just something that I could deal with at that point. Um, and I, I think I spent, I labored for about 40 minutes, um, you know, actually in the pushing phase and stuff in the, in the tub before my son was born. Even though I was able to end labor without any drugs, I was still part of the hospital system of doing things. So when it came time to push, the nurses told me that my doctor was busy down the hall delivering twins, so I had to hold my pushes in until she got there to help me deliver my baby. And I remember at the time that I knew I could have said, no, I'm going to do what I want and push anyway. but. Again, I didn't know how to assert that kind of authority once I was in the hospital, and so I just listened to them. And, you know, just trying to work against my own body was probably one of the most painful experiences in the entire process of labor and childbirth. So as soon as my son was born, uh, what I remember is just the intense feeling of relief. Any pain that I'd been in was just totally gone. Um, the My midwife, she uh, took my son and, and immediately put him up on my chest. And, um, and we kind of covered him up with a towel, but we were skin to skin um, and just kind of laid there. He cried for a little bit, not very long, maybe five or 10 seconds. And his color came all nice. And they checked him with the Doppler, but they did all of that while he was on on my chest and we took we waited about 15 or 20 minutes until the the uh the umbil umbilical cord um quit pulsing and then i think my husband cut the cord and um and at that point after about 15 or 20 minutes they took my son from me and and did some of the did the apgar tests and stuff and while they were doing that um the assistant took me into the bathroom and helped me take a shower and clean up um about 10 or 15 minutes or so. And then I went back out into the, li to the living room and um, sat on the couch um, while they were finishing up with the tests and stuff. After my daughter was born, they put her up on my belly for about a minute or two while they cut the cord. And then they took her off of me and you know took her over to a table to clean her up. And it probably took at least 10 minutes before I was actually able to hold her in my arms for the first time, um, which was actually a little bit tough for me because my mom was one of the first people who actually got to hold her, and I wasn't. And you know, I had some help in the hospital. The nurses helped me around for the first few hours after I gave birth, and they were there to help me when I called on them for help. But I was basically alone in dealing with this newborn. And the feeling of being very alone um, was really part of the whole process of my hospital experience and, and what I remember from 
from the entire thing. So after my son was born and after they'd finished up with all the tests and weighing him and stuff, um, the the midwives uh, basically, they, they got me some food and some drinks and then they just, they cleaned up. They cleaned the tub up. They, they threw everything out that needed to go away. And um, they they sat in the living room with us for a couple of hours and made sure that, that breastfeeding was going all right and, and that, you know, everything was fine. And then at the point that we kind of started seeming tired and ready for them to go, they left. And um, they came back the next day just to, to check in on us again. And they came, I think it was three days after he was born. Uh, the one midwife came. And, um, and she spent about three hours with us that afternoon um, just holding the baby and talking with us and stuff and, and, and seeing how things were going. 